Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill. And this time we're going to take a look at yet another multimeter but this isn't yet another multimeter this is one that's uh, a little bit different it's got a, a built-in uh, infrared camera and I think that's potentially very useful for hobbyists who are trying to fault find perhaps on on vintage computers and, and that kind of thing it allows you to identify components that are um, not at the kind of temperature you might expect shall we say be that hot or cold so uh, let's start with a quick look at what's in the box and then put it through its paces okay here's the contents of the box then meter itself USB-C lead required for charging the uh, internal battery a rather nice little pouch uh, uh, manual which is uh, nice and clear also includes the uh, emissivity table to allow you to uh, make allowances for whatever it is that uh, you're looking at with the, with the infrared camera and a pair of probes that uh, are of the quality you'd expect for a meter at this uh, kind of price point. It uh, feels nice and solid yeah got no complaints there so yeah nice nice um, nice bit of kit so let's now um, get set up on the bench and have a look how it gets on testing a few components Okay, uh, switched off the, the bench light in the hope that you can um, see the display a bit better. It certainly um, seems to be coming out okay. So it does uh, volts and amps etc. but we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, it does all the kind of things you'd expect um, a digital multimeter to do. Uh, the specification says the frequency is good up to 100 well, to 99 kilohertz. Um, it certainly worked up to 96 kilohertz for me, no problem. Again, I won't bore you with that, but I did try it out. So I've got some uh, fairly uh, extreme value resistors here. This one comes out at about 8.3 mega ohms on my uh, LCR meter. So we'll just, um, if I can get the probes to actually stop where I want them to. Um, yeah, so you can see that's uh, pretty close really. The LCR meter makes it about 8.1 I think, um, so that's pretty good. I've got a, the other end of the scale here, this is a 10 ohm resistor. And again, yeah, it's just less than 0.1 ohm out. So that did come up with about 10 ohms on the LCR meter, so again, yeah, it's doing doing fine on that. Um, we hop around the settings here, while I'm there I'm just going to go to, to diode, I've got an LED here uh, which we'll just quickly check. So in one direction we should get nothing as you would expect there, reverse bias and this has got enough oomph here to uh, light the LED and, and drive it up to its, um, its uh, forward bias voltage there, 1.8 six volts so that works nicely uh, and the other thing that I think is always handy for a hobbyist um, is capacitance so there we go that's capacitance now it says it'll do from 10 nanofarads uh, right up to um, uh, quite a few millifarads so I thought just to stretch it I've got a 2.2 n a capacitor here it comes out at about uh, 2.1 on my LCR meter so this is actually theoretically smaller than it's capable of measuring but as you can see it's got that absolutely fine uh, 2.1 which is what the LCR meter um, made of it too the other end of the scale got a 2200 microfarad electrolytic and as with all multimeters it takes it a moment or two to to charge it up it's gone over to, to millifarads now as you'd expect and it's saying 2.26 it's uh, a 2200 so again yeah uh, it's done that uh, rather nicely now I've got some resistors up here and uh, I'll come back to uh, what I'm going to do with these um, in a moment or two but uh, here we've got um, oops I'm still on millifarads that's one of the reasons it's not uh, <laughs> making any sense of the resistor, apologies. Um, so here I've got, uh, well it's a 220 ohm resistor coming out at about 219 and then here I've got a 120 ohm coming out at about 117 
So um, I'm going to do something with these that allows us to look at um, some of the other capabilities of the meter. So I'm going to get set up for that and then um, I'll come back and uh, show you what, uh, what what's going on. Okay, so the meter, I've still got it in ohms here, but I've now moved the positive probe into the amp section. Uh, you can press these buttons as many times as you want. Um, it won't make any difference. Uh, you have to press this one to get it into amps, uh, which it hops onto there rather nicely. So this is, uh, uh, I've got this obviously in DC current. So I've got um, a 6 volt supply coming in uh, onto these two resistors. So let's first of all um, just connect up, uh, got to get this the right way around. So for this resistor, which I think is the 220 ohm, um, with a 6 volt supply we're getting uh, about 27.5 milliamps, something like that. Um, and if you do the math, that's well inside a quarter watt rest resistor's uh, rating. Across here, I've got the um, 120 ohm. And this is running at um, well 51 milliamps, and again, if you do the math, that takes us uh, slightly beyond the uh, um, quarter watt rating. So I would expect this resistor um, to get um, significantly hotter um, than this one uh, while it was working. Uh, and I'm sure you've now worked out where I'm going. So let's first of all now let's take away the meter, and let's just. Uh, Let's put um, a supply onto that resistor. So we'll have uh, 27 uh, milliamps flowing now with that resistor. We certainly should do. So now what I'm going to do is go back to infrared camera. I don't know how well this is going to pick it up. But uh, you can hopefully see there that bright spot in the centre is the resistor. And it's up at about... Um, around about 27 centigrade. It does also do Fahrenheit, but uh, use metric measurement myself. Um, uh, and these uh, two numbers that jump about are the, the minimum and the maximum temperatures, but you can very clearly see there, that's stable now. Um, and it's about, yeah, it's about between, shall we say, let's call it 27 and a half degrees um, which is that resistor doing work so if I take away the the current um, that should begin to cool down I don't know how quickly it'll do that yeah you can see it's dropping right down there yeah yeah so it's losing its heat quite rapidly it's quite a been quite a warm morning here which um, has just made it um, slightly more difficult to uh, to achieve what I'm trying to achieve here. So currently, uh, there's the 220 ohm resistor, and you can't even see the uh, 120 ohm resistor. I'm now going to power it up. If I can do that while I've still got the display on, I'll do my best. Right, that flash was me, it was my hand, oh, which was warm. Right, so you can now see the other ones fading away, and straight away, this is coming up. It's already above 30. Remember, we said the current here was about 51 milliamps. So we can see straight away that resistor is dissipating some more heat. Um, so hopefully, that's. Um, yeah, that's hopefully making some sense. Um, now there's a button here to save the display. And it saves a bitmap there. Um, I'll save these here now and then uh, uh, I'll superimpose them over the picture if I can possibly do that. So if you're seeing that now, that means I've managed to do it. Just take another one. We're up at... Um, remember the, the other the 220 ohm resistor was doing about uh, 27, 28 degrees. This is a good, uh, good 10 degrees uh, warmer than that. So I'll just take another picture there now at about 38. So yeah, that's the um, 
thermography camera working well. So I'm just going to um, uh, get something else now on the display. We'll just give that resistor a rest. And I've got here um, a Raspberry Pi uh, to Mark III and uh, it does have software installed so if we just position the camera over that uh, and I'll take a, a picture, I mean there are one or two things there but you can't see um, particularly much so I'll take that as a, as a base image and if I can do it without too much waving about I'm now going to plug in the power supply for the Raspberry Pi so it's now booted, or it's booting I should say, and straight away you can see we've got um, some things starting to get warm. That's the voltage regulator, I think. Yep, it is, that's the voltage regulator. And we are now starting to get that large splodge, that's the, the system on a chip. And immediately to its right in the centre of the screen is, um, I think that's the RAM actually. They've got uh, heat sinks on, which I didn't put on when I bought it, so not 100% sure. But there you go. That's um, that's it showing up the uh, the heat of the of the computer board starting up. I'll get grab a screen of that for you. Now, of course, this is a very useful um, item in the sense that it allows you to see what's working and what isn't, but it would also identify uh, something which was hotter than the other components. So if you were trying to fault find, let's say, um, I don't know, some RAM in a, a vintage computer, you might um, you might actually be able to identify which RAM chips were getting too warm or weren't getting warm at all. It would be um, fairly easy to do that um, using this camera. So, uh, yeah. That's quite nice. So there you go. That's the uh, that's the thermography. Now I'm going to just move the Raspberry Pi out the way for a minute, and uh, there's a couple of other things you can do. You've got a a menu here, so it's possible to hop into the menu, and then you can scroll down through various things, and you get to the point where you can uh, turn on um, the USB. Uh, I think you just, yep, there we go, so that's USB on. And if I connect USB to this, I should be able to get those pictures off. Um, you can also uh, format the um, space on the machine if you've used uh, all the uh, space up with pictures. Yeah, you can calibrate the position of the, um, of the two cameras, the normal imaging and the thermal. And as well on here, you can... Uh, you turn the USB on now. I'll I'll do that, but I'll do it in a minute when I've shown you that we're on version 022. Now I've upgraded the software, um, and I'll put a link in the description to where you can do that on the Zoe website. So you turn the USB on, and then you turn off the machine, and you turn it on, holding the up and it comes up there USB disk driver and if you then plug in the USB lead uh, there's um, a folder which allows you to uh, put the firmware file into that and the moment the upload's finished uh, the machine just uh, uh, proceeds to uh, install the new software so it does that um, uh, rather nicely there we go so yeah that's the Zoe ZTR Zero one infrared thermography multimeter. Um, uh, it's a nice bit of kit. I've been doing less and less multimeter reviews because uh, very often they're all the same. Um, but the scope meters have been useful that I've looked at, and I still use the Zoe scope meter quite a lot. Uh, and I think this is um, potentially very handy if you're uh, trying to fault find. Um, yeah, you can um, look at the temperature of things, but uh, you can also uh, use it on circuit boards and it responds uh, uh, nice and quickly. At the beginning of the video I mentioned uh, emissivity and that's the uh, property of, um, of material to uh, 
to transmit uh, infrared light. Um, and that varies depending on the type of material. At the very back of the uh, meter's manual is this table. And this table lists, uh, there's two, two columns actually, lists the um, various types of material and their emissivity. And you can enter this information into the uh, multimeter and it will uh, attempt to correct for that for you. So if you're doing the kind of thing I mentioned earlier where you just want to find inside a computer or something like that to see which chips are, are hot and which aren't, uh, you're probably only interested in a relative um, measurement. Um, this attempts to give you a, a slightly more uh, absolute uh, measurement figure if that's the kind of thing you need. Okay, well there you go, that's the uh, thermography multimeter, the Zoe uh, ZTR01. Um, it does what it says on the tin and I think the uh, infrared features, um, uh, as I said in the beginning, very handy from a, a fault finding point of view. Uh, as a multimeter, yeah, um, it, it does just fine, um, it does what you might uh, expect, uh, obviously being rechargeable is um, uh, quite handy as long as you remember to charge it, uh, but yeah it's good. Uh, I'll put some links in the description to uh, where you can find the information about the meter and also uh, where you can find the uh, firmware upgrade and things like that and I'll also see if I can get you a a sales link. Uh, just want to make the point though that the sales link is just a sales link. Um, I make uh, nothing from that um, very deliberately. Uh, if you think this is good and it's something you want then fill your boots and get one. If you don't then then don't. It's um, I think it's a hobbyist multimeter with some potentially uh, useful features. Um, so yeah I'd be um, more than happy to, to make use of that. Okay, thanks very much for watching and uh, hope to see you on the next video.